Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Playful Escape podcast. My name is Kimberly. And my name is Cindy. And we are your hosts. Today is going to be a rather different approach to our podcast. I believe we are going to be talking about creating a YouTube channel. Yes, but I would say it's more of if we create a YouTube channel, what would your content be? So it's not like, oh, yeah, let's create a YouTube channel. It's more like, hypothetically, if we did create one individually or as or together, like what your content be is what I was trying to get to. It's a hypothetical YouTube channel. Who knows what we'll do? I mean, maybe down the line we'll do it. I've been on the fence since like 2012 or earlier Mm -hmm. (laughs) to do this. I mean, I don't think it's going to start, but... I mean, it's been eight years, so. (laughs) Okay, so then you were the one who have been on the fence about this for about eight years. What are some of the things that you anticipate your hypothetical YouTube channel to look like? Ooh, and see, that's interesting. When I first wanted to start it, I was going to have different content than if I were to have started it now. Okay. Let's talk about like the first time you wanted to create it versus now. So in the past, what did you want to showcase? I guess I would want to do what we're doing right now. Just talk to people. Mm -hmm. Like even if it wasn't anyone specific, I would want to talk and give like stories or my experiences. I don't know. I feel like I'm very wise for my age. (laughs) But like, not even that. I feel like, you know, you know how people always say it's like, oh, I'm really good at giving advice, but I'm bad at taking my own advice. Yes. I feel like, yes, that's partially true. Yeah, I I can be really opinionated and give people advice, but I might be bad at taking it myself, you know? Hmm. Yeah. So like, I would have wanted to have done that, even though like, you know, eight years ago, I'm not that old. I'm not that wise. I just felt like I had been through some things that I felt like, oh, people my age or even not even my age, like people around my peers, I suppose, could relate to, you know, feeling this way or experiencing these things. So I felt like, oh, that would be really interesting. But now, although we're doing this podcast to talk about like our experiences and kind of possibly our advice and stuff, I've lived eight years since that. I've been in a relationship basically the time that I've been hesitant on a podcast or sorry, on a YouTube channel. A YouTube channel. <laughs> the podcast was recent <laughs> and that there was basically no hesitation. It was just like, let's start. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only reason is because I had told you that I was trying to do a podcast and I have been thinking about doing a podcast I don't know for how long, but I know that for the past year and a half or almost two years, I've been like heavily like, I want to do this. Like, I need to do this. And since I started thinking about it, I know that the realm of podcasts just got bigger and bigger. And I was like, "Mm -mm. I need to be a part of this, not to get famous, not to do that. I just feel like I... I spent so much of my life not really having a voice like publicly or in that kind of case. And now I want to be able to have a voice. I want to be able to just put my passion into whatever it is that I want to do. And I still don't know what it is that I want to do out there. That's actually pretty funny because my friend and I were having this conversation about um, he was asking me if uh, how I'm doing because we're both in the same major, but we've realized that we're both really alike. And he was telling me how much he hates doing the work for our major, like doing the homework and schoolwork and stuff. And I wouldn't say that I hate it. I absolutely dread it. I mean, yeah, it's work, but when you get it, it's so satisfying. Like for me, like just understanding something is like, ugh. I'm so smart. (laughs) It's like so gratifying, (laughs) which is like, I mean, it's weird. It's like, oh, why do you think that about yourself? It's like, no, like, I feel like I could be the dumbest person in the world sometimes. Mm -hmm. 
being able to understand something that I thought was going to be so difficult or that I was struggling in. It's so gratifying. It feels so good. It's such a nice feeling. So although I dread the work, the workload is, it's crazy. It can be a lot and it's overwhelming and they expect so much of us, especially during this pandemic. I don't know when they think we eat, sleep or do anything else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he was telling me how much he regrets making a change in his life. So when he switched majors from something he really loved to our major, we've already talked about my major, right? Mm, I don't think so. Okay, well, then I'm just going to leave it very ambiguous. But yeah, so I'm just going to say in an engineering major, which is, you know, difficult. You need the math, the science, you need to be on top of the math and the sciences. So it asks a lot of you. And I realized that although I really like that gratifying feeling, I like the challenge more so than anything else. And although sometimes I regret having made the decision of sticking to engineering, I really don't have another place where I feel like, oh, this is where I belong. So although I don't feel that way here. At school. Yeah. Or in this position of like engineering or anything. It still serves me a little bit of purpose where I feel, oh, that was really rewarding for me to have completed that. Mm -hmm. And to quote my friend, it's like, I'm in way too deep. It's like, I don't want to get out of this. Oh, no. <laughs> like, I feel like I can't. You know what I mean? I think that happened to me the first time that I was going to, um, when I was in school in my first major that I thought I was in too deep. But I was like, wait, I only did most of the gen eds i should still have some units to be able to transfer or change my major which fortunately i was off by just one unit i almost made the cap the cap requirement for graduation i think the cap requirement was 140 units and if they tallied all of the classes that i took i was at 139 so i was thinking i should just take another one unit class to meet that cap you said that was for a graduation? Yes. So, but you would have just graduated with like uh, a GE's, no? No, because I was going to a university and it had to match my major. Oh, so what would you have majored in if you had finished that one unit? That unit, I don't know. I changed my major. So, okay. Now I'm curious. If I had stayed on the, my path, it would have been different. But we're segueing a little too far away from the YouTube aspect. Right. Well, but th this is what I would have initially talked about in my YouTube channel. Had I created it eight years ago, I would have been talking about like life experiences. And had I still had it now to this day, it would have been different. But I'm sure I would have had these talks about, oh, second guessing myself. Oh, what should I do? Instead of telling people for advice, I'd be asking for like life okay. experiences of people or something. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So my curious question is a lot of people who are YouTubers, influencers, content creators started off early and you wanted to start around the time that most of these were barely creating accounts or in the same situation. What would have happened education wise if you had become this big YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't know if we talked about this, but I was just taking regular courses at my local community college before I transferred into a major, which to me still feels really recent. So although I've I, I'm in way too deep, like I said, I had completed all those classes before transferring. So for me, it really was when I transferred, I had to be sure about my decision because I couldn't just be like, oh, no, never mind. Let me just switch it really quick because all the courses that I took in my community college were related to engineering. Like, yes, I could have transferred to a different school for a different major with my other units or with majority of my units in any way but it would have been a different major. You know, they would be looking at different classes, whereas this one was looking at my maths and sciences. Yeah. Okay. So you said past YouTube eight years ago, yeah. giving advice to people and talking to people. Current YouTube, asking for advice. Partially asking for advice. Yeah. What else would you do? Um, 
the thing I talk about the most in my life, which is like one of my interests or passions, if you will, which is like environment, eco-friendly stuff, sustainability, stuff like that, or even minimalism, because I want to get into it, especially since like we don't really have a lot of room. And I feel like it's not just decluttering your like wardrobe, it's decluttering your life. Mm -hmm. And I'm constantly finding that it seems much easier to pick between two items as it is compared to 10 or 20 items. It's like you're relieving stress in some aspects. And I feel like I would like that. I already have like my favorite things that I know I would like to keep. Why am I keeping the other things that are just clutter? They're not serving me a purpose or they're just in the way. Yeah. I think it would be very interesting to have you create that kind of YouTube channel, especially for the people who share a room. Yeah. But so like if I were to create my YouTube channel like today, it would be mostly about the journey, trying to get there, the struggles mm -hmm. until I finally get there, which some people may not have seen the journey and how much of a struggle it was. They might just see, oh, wow, she's so minimalist or oh, she's so eco-friendly and stuff like that. And I feel like that's what people neglect the journey, how long it takes people to do that, because technically... I've talked to a lot of people about how much I care about the environment, how, how like conscious we have to be, how I try to reduce my waste. I try not to do a lot of things and I've changed a lot of people's minds. I made my friend buy a silicone reus reusable plastic bag because he kept bringing cut slices of apples or nuts and, and fruits and stuff or like, uh, what is it? Trail mix in plastic bags and he felt judgment. And I was like, no, I'm not judging you. If that's what you have, you know, you do you. I was like, but if you could just get a reusable plastic bag, would you use it? And he was like, yeah, I would. So I ended up helping him buy it. And then he just would use it every so often. Like he tried to use it a lot, but sometimes there were days like, oh, I forgot to wash it, which is something that people have to take into consideration. If you want to be reducing your waste, you're going to have to be washing things or getting multiple items of the same thing. So you don't have to be washing as frequently. Our dad is home today. It's the first day that he's been home for work, like an actual day off. And his phone just ran off. So we apologize for any noise that there may be in the background. Just giving you a heads up. We cannot control what my dad does. Uh, he is a hardworking man. Shout out to you. But let's just go ahead and continue. Hi, dad. Not that you listen to our podcasts, but mom does. So mom will tell you that we said hi and that you are very hardworking. <laughs> okay. So... Yeah, that's one of the hardest struggles that we have as far as like the sustainability, because when I was doing meal prepping, it was hard for me to be able to first have containers to put everything and all of that stuff. I would like to add that you bought all the containers for your meal prepping stuff when you were doing this consistently, and then you just yeah. tapered off and stopped, which is... A little triggering because you had initially bought containers that you were using and used the heck out of those. And they were just some cheap plastic containers that could be that, that looked like they could have been takeout food. Yeah. And then you upgraded to glass and silicone covered glass for protection and these like clip on lids. Mm -hmm. And you just stopped like you used them like maybe four or five times and then that's it uh no i think i used it a little bit more than that but when i bought them my situation was just i wasn't able to have time for them anymore work it was getting busy life changed too exactly life changed a lot and i feel bad because those containers are expensive they're not cheap them. at all i did i last week <laughs> no, no no i mean continue to use them yeah like last week, for example, Johnny and I got food. Oh, so <laughs> we always get food. Uh-huh. What'd you get? I got food. I got the pasta bread bowl from Domino's. 
Oh. I feel bad because I just keep eating out. And I couldn't eat the whole bread bowl by myself. And I usually don't eat it all by myself. Sometimes I just take a couple of bites from John's and he hates it when I do that. But I had not eaten yet and I was hungry. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try the bread bowl. I ate the bread bowl. I couldn't finish it. Only ate half. And I was trying to figure out, I don't want to put this cardboard box in for just half. There has to be a container. And then I opened the cabinet where I have my meal prep containers and all those things. And I, was, I was just thinking, I can put it in my meal prep container. It's small enough. It's not too big. And I just put it in there. But I need to figure out a better way to use those containers. Also, can we just say, you don't have to call them meal prep containers. They are just regular containers for food. I know. It's just since they're yours, you bought with your money or eventually you use somebody else's money because I think we had to replace some because one broke yeah but like for that since you initially went out of your way to purchase them like for me if I feel a little uncomfortable for me to use your container because if I break it I feel liable to replace it and I mean I would because I broke it but then they're just sitting there in the cabinet taking up a lot of space and not being used I know I feel bad about that and kind of like going back to the YouTube thing, if I had been more heavily into meal prepping because I'm a picky eater, you're a picky eater, we both know that the public probably doesn't, whoever's listening doesn't, or they do because they're family members. We are very picky eaters. We don't like vegetables or we like a certain amount of vegetables. We don't like all of them. We don't like the way it's cooked. And the fact that I was meal prepping the only thing that I ate for my meal prep was either tofu, chicken, broccoli, and carrots. It Was that it? Was that really it? Potatoes. Oh, potatoes. Thank you. And potatoes. It's because you and dad tend to steal my potatoes sometimes. No, I, I asked you to make me extras because I would take it. Yeah. And it was, at some points, it was really hard because when you're eating the same thing every day eventually you get tired of eating the same thing you can't get creative with the same vegetables so if i was to create a youtube channel you would like dive into food prep i would probably dive a little bit more into food prep or dive a little bit more into health because i've gained weight since this quarantine began but that's fine i don't think there's anything wrong with that i have stopped weighing myself since I stopped being a vegetarian. Like in the beginning, I did a little bit to see how much weight I had gained. Oh, also, I should say I was a vegetarian. So eight years ago, I kind of became a vegetarian. And then I stayed a vegetarian for like four years, I think it was. A vegetarian who does not eat vegetables. At the time. But believe it or not, since I stopped being a vegetarian, I actually have dove into vegetables and stuff like that, like healthier foods. And I guess what I'm trying to say is when I was a vegetarian, like eight plus years ago, they didn't have the vegetarian alternatives, vegan alternatives that they do now. And now I can go to Carl's Jr. and get a Beyond Burger, which is no meat. Obviously, they cook it on the same grill, so that's up to you whether or not you feel comfortable eating it if it was cooked on a grill where a regular burger was made. But that convenience of it is still nice, you know? Yeah. And I guess I would like to say it's like I stopped eating meat because I didn't really like eating meat. It felt really heavy and I never found it easy to get a piece of meat that I liked to eat. I guess it was that I was just really picky. People never really cooked the meat the way I liked it, so I never ate it. I never enjoyed eating it. Now that I know the kind, the way I like my meat to be cooked, I eat it more. Mm -hmm. But I could live without it again, if the need be. I know there's alternatives. I know what I like now more so than anything. Because before I was like, I don't want that. I don't want that. Instead of trying it and being like, oh, this is actually pretty good. So I'm more willing to try things, but I've been introduced to this whole new world of meats and chickens and seasonings that it's pretty good. But like I said, I can make do without. I think we both have a different mindset with creating a YouTube channel. Then how is it that we can create a podcast together? No, I was going to say we have a different mindset, but a similarity where we both stand in regards to a journey. Yeah. 
and growth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You wanted to give advice and then advice seek a way to grow Mm -hmm. yourself. For me, it was more about the process of becoming healthier, eating healthier, maybe being happy with my own physical appearance, aspect, physical appearance, uh, mental health, that kind of stuff, which is one of the approaches that we have on YouTube channels. But I know that we both also have other things that we want to talk about, maybe on a YouTube channel, if we were to do that. Yes. I still want to do that thing where we show people what's in our bags because I know that was a thing on YouTube and it's like probably not anymore, but people, some people still do it. I find that the people that still do it are people that are into like sustainability and like conscious purchasing and stuff like that because people want to know what are you carrying with you? What do you need in your everyday life that you want with you? That's on your end of YouTube. I still watch in my bag but i watch people who are uh, filmmakers who are Mm. photographers Mm -hmm. and they have a gear bag and i just watch that because they're just so aesthetically pleasing we're at both separate ends on youtube yeah Uh, but we have some middle ground where we watch the same thing it can be like entertainment you know Mm -hmm. And I feel like, although I would probably want to do like this eco-conscious stuff, there will be a lot of moments where, so I guess I may have two separate YouTube channels, one that's more educational purposes for like, oh, my journey and growth without too much about my personal life. But then I would have my vlogs channel that it would be, you know, more of my little shenanigans that I get into and stuff. And I already have that like vlog style shenanigan thing from ooh two, three years ago. I posted a couple of videos on that. Yeah, I'm also in some channels on some videos, right? Uh, I think you were in one. Yes. I thought I was in two. Don't remember. I think it's just the one. Yeah, so I have a vlog channel and I ended up using that channel as a growth channel. As a professional in teaching, it was more of like my daily teaching journals, like things that happened before and after class, like what I had in mind going into a classroom versus what I had after I had taught the class. It was part of an assignment, but for me, it worked and it was easier for me to just speak to a camera and make sure that the videos were all concise together. Some of those videos are 15 minutes long. Some of them are like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I only watched them when I was editing them, though my professor had to watch them and she f- said that it's taking me some time to watch them. I'm like, it's okay. You don't need to watch them. She said, I have to watch them. It's for your grade. Oh, <laughs> watch them at two times the speed. She's like, no, I need to watch it at the regular speed. I can't do two times the speed. I can't do that. And She's like, I just wanted to make sure I was in the headspace to watch those videos. And she commented on some of those videos. I was like, (laughs) oh, in the vlog style thing, I think I was going to have a similar approach. One with growth, like focusing on like the physical, mental aspect of being healthy, taking care of yourself, self-love, that kind of, of approach. And I think that there would be another channel that I would also have that is more on the entertainment side. It can be vlogs, it could be gaming things, it could be reaction to other stuff. That's funny, I forgot you're into game. Well, I mean, not that I forgot, but like you could actually get a little bit into that because I I think as we have stated, we are opposites and that's one of the things that we're on opposing sides of. Not that we're like fighting. It's like, yes, you should be gaming. No, you shouldn't be gaming. That's not at all it. Like we have our own interests and that's just what it is. But I am not into gaming. I cannot play video games for the life of me. I die in the first level constantly for Super Mario Brothers. I did too when I started. Like it doesn't matter. I'm just not good at it. And yes, I get that you you got better at it. But I don't think I could stick to it that long where I would get good at it. I think it's just a matter of right now, it's quarantine, coronavirus, entertainment. But I have different interests. True. So although you could be like, oh, I have nothing better to do. Let me play my game. 
I have nothing better to do. Let me clean the house. Let me organize my stuff. Let me try to make my living situation a little bit more convenient, you know? I do that, but maybe once a month, I would prefer to play games over doing that. I'd just rather be distracted and have fun than be... Well, see, that's the thing. I find organizing really fun. I like organizing. (sighs) But, I mean, if I were better at it, I wouldn't have to do it so often, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Because if I had organized to my optimal potential for my living situation, I wouldn't have things falling out of organization or getting in, you know, this chaos. Yeah. I honestly do think that that would be a really interesting channel. Starting from a place where the minimalization and organization is everything that you crave but you can't do because of your living situation and because there are other people contributing to that factor to eventually like if you move out and have your own place how would that look like so that's partially the thing so i know i have a lot of certain things that i don't need i know like i have bags and backpacks and stuff like that that I know I will never use or they have no purpose. Like I had a old school backpack that I really liked when I had it, but I bought a new school backpack that was just more convenient to me because I liked more pockets. But I find that when you find something that fits your purpose, what your intention is, it's easier for you to just use that one item as opposed to I've had three different backpacks in eight years, but I have recently bought a new backpack with all the kind of pockets that I like, water bottle pouch on the outside because I need to drink water when I'm at school. And I bought another backpack that was bigger that originally had intended to use for school but it was just way too big. And I had gotten rid of my suitcase already for when we go traveling and stuff. So I was like, why don't I just keep this backpack that's a little bit larger and use that for a suitcase? So I, cause I already liked the design. I really liked the pockets and how it was built. And I guess I should add to that. I'm really conscious about how I'm buying things too. So I buy most of my stuff secondhand or I look into companies that I support what they're saying. Like even my headphones that I'm wearing, they're more conscious about how they're producing their products. So I had old headphones that are just basic like Sony headphones that I got like at a Best Buy or something. And this time around, I really wanted to get a better quality headphone, something that would last, something that supported my ideals, I guess you could say. And Same thing was with my backpack. I wanted to buy something that was either made not with raw materials, but like giving materials a second life. So my backpack is actually made from like recycled plastic, which makes it a little water resistant. And as opposed to my old backpacks that I bought brand new with most likely raw materials, which was is a little bit more wasteful when you think about it. So Now, in my everyday life, I'm trying to incorporate little things like that, that I know I could just spend a little extra time to get an item that's curated for my wants and needs. So I wanted a backpack with more pockets because it would be more convenient for me to hold different things in. So I looked for that. I have these set ideals that I'd like to be more conscious of what I'm putting out into the world. So this company like tracks the amount of like trash that they're saving from the oceans because it's made with recycled plastic. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like sometimes I'm reminded of our family while I was a vegetarian and while I had different ideals, they were very interested to like ask me about it. I remember one of our cousins actually asked me, well, this cousin is a cousin that's in a different state. So when they saw me at a family gathering and I told them that I was a vegetarian, he was all like, that's very interesting. He's like, what else do you do differently than the rest of the world? Now I'm very curious to find out 
who you are as a person. He's like, what are your political beliefs? Like, and he just started questioning me. And I was like, why is that so interesting? I initially thought that's weird. I'm just a vegetarian. That doesn't say anything about me. But I guess I understand now that it was like, but why are you a vegetarian? Do you really believe in not eating animals? And although, yes, I do like that aspect that I don't have to eat animals. Now, I guess because I'm no longer a vegetarian, are we saying, it's like, oh, are you saying it's okay to eat animals? It's like, if I know I could do it again, if I wanted to, it's just convenience. I feel like that's all it is. The way you want to live your life is, are you doing it out of convenience Or are you doing it because you want to live intentionally? And honestly, I've constantly been telling Simon how I want to live more intentionally, not just in how we eat or how we buy stuff, but life itself. In living in the city that we live in, everything is so fast paced. Everybody is like, I got to get here. I got to get here. I got to get this done. You're just so timed in life. And although I could be timed, I want to do things slower. I want to enjoy life because I feel like Halloween's around the corner. Next is Thanksgiving, then Christmas. But I feel like I'm still living in March of last year when quarantine started, you know? So it's just difficult to live your life when time is just going so fast. Like I can't recount a moment that I was happiest in quarantine, except for when I was reading. Like, yeah, I liked my Hallmark movies and everything, but I was watching so many of those that it wasn't such a significant like moment. It's like, oh, I remember that one time that I watched, I stumbled upon that one movie. Maybe the first time I watched Hallmark with mom would be that like monumental moment where I was like, wow, that was like one of those moments where I really enjoyed myself. Mm -hmm. But because I had just like rediscovered reading and books and stuff, That was like my happiest little oasis in the middle of quarantine that yeah, it was just interesting. So you were talking about books and I think that's a thing that we have in common. Now. I used to love reading books. I used to spend all of my time doing exactly what it is that you did during the summer when you didn't have to worry about class, when you didn't want to watch movies. And you found one book that sparked your interest. You bought the whole series for it, which I thought was shocking. I bought the whole series first and I read one book and I just read them through. But it's because the movie sparked your interest. Okay, so I guess I could tell you. I read the like first page on each book on the website that I bought them from. But like even on like Barnes and Noble or is that the one that's open still? <laughs> I don't even remember what they're called. But like even on other like websites where they sell books, they give you like a short introduction or summary of the mm -hmm. book that you can read. So I did that before buying a lot of books. I read the little first page glimpse into the book. Mm -hmm. And for the series, I did it for all of them to see kind of what was going on. I guess I could have been cheating if like I had caught a glimpse of something, but I just didn't know the series or the books well enough to know if I missed something or if I was just spoiling something. So I actually read the first page of all the books before buying them. And they, they were entertaining enough for me to want to buy the series. And that's one thing I kind of regret, that I bought the series new. Like, I could have bought them secondhand, like I did the rest of my books. But buying them secondhand would have possibly cost a little bit more money because they might have sold them for more. But we know this website where they sell them really affordably, so it could have been beneficial. But then I kind of would have been triggered if they were all different, like book covers and stuff or editions. That's the one thing about buying secondhand. If you don't buy like the whole box set secondhand, you're not going to guarantee the same set. Yeah. It, for example, Harry Potter. There's a bunch of different publications of Harry Potter. And if you buy secondhand, yeah, you can look into the different editions, but it's not always going to guarantee that they match up to the set that you want to get. So yeah. Box sets are very interesting. And like you can see in the room, like how I have my books. I specifically curated them to books that I liked. And then I found a publication that 
printed them the same size and dimensions and I really liked the way they looked, although they're a little bit bigger and bulkier than some of the other ones that I have. I knew that they were going to have them rather uniform, even if they were technically different, you know, genres and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I just stuck to that publication because I really liked it. And now when I look for other books, I look for the same thing for like similar style books or the same publication to try and get them within that range. Yes. I think if we were to both create a YouTube channel together, books would be a place where we kind of have common ground. Combine it. Where yeah, it's a common ground. Movies in some cases, like reviews, that kind of stuff, I think that where would be where we would lay. We do have similar tastes, but we also have our opposite spectrums. I love scary movies and you hate scary movies. I will watch them. I just rather not. I feel like the word is hate. <laughs> no, I don't hate them. You don't like them. Yes, but that doesn't mean I hate them. I know you'd probably watch them, but I don't think you enjoy it. I feel like the reason people like scary movies is they like to get scared. They like to feel anxious and you don't like that. No, because I already live a scared, anxious life already as it is. Why do I want to build up to that? So then why do you? Why would you say that you don't not like scary movies when that's what it is? You don't like them. You don't like those feelings. I just don't. I just don't like it. Yeah, so that, that's what I'm going to say. I think it's just more implied through the music. Mm -hmm. But again, we're getting off topic. Yeah, we can do like our own spectrum of film reviews where you describe what it is that you like. Mm hmm as far as film wise versus and how I didn't like it because of certain things like we can talk about the same film and have really opposing views, which is an interesting approach. Yeah, so we can have very opposing views to films. We have very opposing views to like TV shows There's TV shows that you like, but you recommend to me and I don't like them or something like that. So that's where we have the common ground, like discussing films, discussing books, stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. For the most part, we do have similar tastes. Like, I don't like watching TV series, not because I don't like TV series, but because it consumes so much of my time. And you love TV series. And all of the ones you like, I like too. It's just I don't like getting sucked into having to watch eight series of Doctor Who or, I don't know, six series of Merlin, you know? You were very accurate, I think, with the Merlin one. That was pretty close. I, I think it's five. No, Doctor Who is more. I know it's more, but I think they're like on the 10th season. Eight seasons sounds about right. No. Oh. Well, it depends on when you're, which ones you're counting. I think it might be 10. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It depends. I still want to get a couple of them, but yeah, that's where we align ourselves as far as like our YouTube channel goes. But what we can also do is in that same youtube channel again if we create one who knows what happens we'll see this is just us speaking and not really acting on it i would like to say that for eight years i have pondered this thought and i still want to do it i'm just i can't edit i can't like all these things that in my life are just like you can't do that you can't do that but I'm like continuing in this major where I feel like I constantly say that to myself. I can't do this. I can't do this. But I'm still doing it. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why I decided to just dive into the deep end as in the podcasting realm. I don't know how to edit. I know we have an editor. Hello, Anastasia. And I am trying to learn to edit for myself. I'm doing a terrible job, which is okay because it takes time and it takes practice for you to learn and figure it out until you master it. You don't have to be taught in a school. The same thing happened with the video editing that I was doing for the vlog that I did. Can we get a sponsor that has videos that we can learn? <laughs> I would love that if we do get sponsored, but... Right now, we're not, so we're not going to promote anything. No, 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 I know, I know. But, like, if anyone wants to sponsor us so we can learn how to improve our podcast and possibly create our YouTube channels. <laughs> but I don't want to get so consumed in the world of YouTube. So earlier, you kind of asked me, it's like, what would have happened to my education about YouTube? And I don't think I really answered that. I mean, I spoke about how I was in community college, so it would have been easier for me 
to still kind of do YouTube because I still had a lot of time on my hands Mm -hmm. for the most part. And like right before I was transferring is when I had less time, I guess you could say. But if I had become really big, I don't know if I would have continued my education. If it had become a like a good solid thing for me, would I have just done YouTube? I feel like I might have, but a part of me still like the part of me that right now tells me that I shouldn't start YouTube because school is a priority. Like that would have been very strong and present in like any videos and stuff that I or, like I found myself getting too consumed by it. I feel like I might not have progressed myself to do better at it. So I'm, I may have just been an amateur for like eight years. <laughs> I would maybe, if I was to start the YouTube channel when I was younger and I had a camera, I did record things, but I did not record to post. It was just for the heck of it, for memorabilia kind of stuff. And I looked back at some of those videos. I deleted them because some of them made no sense whatsoever. But I kept them for such a long time. I have a video on my personal YouTube account that I had recorded something where I felt like I wanted to share something. I don't even remember what it's about, but it was just me talking. And I remember I posted it privately to my account. I hate seeing it. When you click on like my videos and stuff like that, you see the videos that you uploaded And I always see it. And I was like, I should probably take that down. I don't want to see it. But then I'm like, but that was that one moment, God knows, like eight years ago that I finally actually recorded in front of a camera. And then I was like, I'm going to post this, even if nobody sees this, even if I keep it private, I just want to share it, put it out in the world. I want to watch this video. No, (laughs) that is an instant. No, I have no idea what it says. (laughs) You got to watch it and then you have to show it to me so that way we can let the podcast know. I know that the thumbnail is just a picture of me while I'm talking and it's just like a picture like this or something (laughs) where like my face is all deformed and I'm like, "Mm -mm, no. (laughs) That was when YouTube would auto generate thumbnails. At a certain time frame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually in the middle of your video. Yeah. So it was just me in the middle of talking. And they still do that. But now they recommend like three or four of them. And a lot of people who are YouTubers or a lot of people who post videos, they take a specific picture just so they can use it as a thumbnail. They make some edits and upload that, which is fine. I did that for the channel that I had. But yeah, I think after some of the conversations that you and I have about education and like your approach to it and your thoughts about it, I think you would have probably grown i don't know how successful you would have been as a youtuber but like with the struggles that you have with education i honestly do think that you would have probably started neglecting your studies and i know this is opposite because right now you are very into your studies but if you were in that young eight years ago cindy who was starting or in college still don't know what it is that you're studying have a lot of interest in everything and trying to figure out your life and then you found youtube and you were posting consistently even if it was mediocre stuff like if you were posting consistently to the point that you found your niche where you found whatever it is that worked for you and then you just pushed it a little bit more I don't think you would have finished or continued your education. You probably would have done it just because our family says so. Yeah. So, but if I had discovered that that was a passion of mine, like, you know, creating video content, maybe I would have gone into that field and actually have been able to improve my skills. Whereas I never saw that as an option Like I took a digital editing class for like a graduation requirement in high school. And even then I wasn't in charge of editing because I like transferred in or switched in or whatever in the middle of like the semester because they ended up dropping like a different class that I was in and they because not enough people were enrolled. So they're like, oh, you got to go to different classes, spread yourselves out to like the different courses. I was a senior at the time. So it was me and two other seniors that had to be in a like arts and media class. And initially the professor or the teacher was like, no, we don't have enough room for anybody else. So he just told us no, but we had to go back because we were seniors. He couldn't just say no to us. 
And we had to go back with like a slip being like, you have to let them in your class. There's no other option. And he was like, oh, why didn't you guys say so? It's like, you didn't let us. <laughs> but because we started late, we didn't learn the techniques of how to edit and how to do things. We learned the basic like, oh, what's a pan or what's a, you know, just like the lingo a little bit and the importance of certain shots and making a statements and stuff like that but I wasn't the editor I wasn't the director I gave my input and we often would use what I would say sometimes but other than that we were just actors <laughs> basically <laughs> when it came to like filming our little clips for the class yeah I am fortunate enough that I found my passion kind of I don't want to say early on. It took me three years before I figured out what it is that I wanted to do. And I still, now that I graduated, have my degree in what it is that I enjoy. If I had figured out what it is that I wanted to do when I was younger, I probably would have pushed it a little bit more. But when I was younger, I didn't have a lot of experience to be able to create a YouTube channel. I didn't have experience to start a podcast or anything in that way shape or form. But now I know I have a bunch of interests. And if I was to create a YouTube channel, I would do it right now. Yeah. I just don't have time. But you put so much other stuff on your plate. That's why you don't have time. Yeah. That's the sad thing about me. I just like to keep busy. I, I get that, that you like to stay busy. I feel like such a lazy potato when I don't do anything. And I constantly don't do anything. Like if I don't need to do anything, I'm just gonna not do anything. But there is this part of me that when I start having to do stuff again, I regret not having done anything because then mm -hmm. when I'm starting school, I'm like, oh, I should have cleaned. I should have organized. And although I did in the beginning or like shortly right after school or somewhere in the middle, I didn't do enough to when I started school. Now I don't have anywhere to put my new books that I have to make room for because I need them. Now I don't I don't have time to be folding the laundry because I need to put them away, but I didn't organize my stuff in my drawer, so I don't even have room. Now it's just like a piling accumulation of, oh, you didn't do this when you were being a lazy potato, but now you have to do it, or it's just going to sit there while you're going to constantly be looking at it, you know? So it's just, yeah, it's unfortunately just that I'm too lazy sometimes. And then sometimes I like being productive, but I just don't have the time because school for me is so time consuming. Yeah, I think this is just a topic that we may have to address again down the line when we may have more time, when we're able to develop our skill a little bit more and see, are we going to create a YouTube channel? And, and not just for the podcast, because we created a YouTube channel for the podcast, by the way. But that's for Patreon. Yes. <laughs> the thing about creating YouTube and actually posting content that you have to dedicate time. Like, what is it that I'm saying? What is the punchline? What is the moral of the thing? How am I going to edit this together to tell this story, to tell this lesson, or to showcase personal growth? That is a topic that we definitely need to revisit, and we'll probably will revisit who knows when. But again, we're using this podcast to showcase and document things that we like to talk about and reflect on what it is that we talk about. Yeah, I guess I really like having this podcast because it's actually like a time for reflection if we're actually using it for that purpose. Like the last podcast we did was on astrology, which in a way kind of was reflection. I was going to say it was nothing related to reflection, but when we were like analyzing our personalities, you are kind of reflecting on who am I? Do I fit into these yeah. ideas that that are said to be believed in me, you know? So yeah, it was a little bit of reflection of who we were. And I guess that's my favorite part is constantly taking a look at who you are. Is this who I want to be? Is this the best me that I can be, you know? And sometimes I feel like, well, life is a journey. YouTube would be a way of documenting it. And the podcast as well. Yes, but there's also... I feel like in the podcast, I don't know, it's different. You don't have to be like fully aware and conscious of how you're being perceived. Like, yes, audibly you do, but visually you don't. I could be in my pajamas and nobody would know. 
you know? Very true. And YouTube is a whole other, I don't want to say demon, but, you know, it's a whole other entity. And, yeah, you have to be conscious of how you look because not only are you being heard, but you're being seen. And what are you showing? Are you showing this background? Are you showing that background? You know? And it's just like, you have to be so conscious of everything. It's like, what's that over there? And the thing with YouTube is, I guess, anything that you post to the public is you have to develop a kind of thick skin. Because even if you give it your all and put your heart into the content that you're creating. There's criticism. There's always going to be criticism. There's going to be people who hate you who are going to just troll on you and put hate comments and dislike things. And if you're a sensitive person, which is a person, the kind of person that I am, it's going to hurt. And how is that going to reflect future videos once that first comment happens? That's a very good point. But I don't want to say I have thick skin because I'm not 100% sure. I feel like for the most part I can, but there are parts of me that wouldn't want to hear that and there are parts of me that I know even if I heard that I'm not going to pay attention to it partially because they don't know me they don't know that this is a journey and I'm only human I'm supposed to make mistakes everybody's only human mistakes happen and I feel like I guess that's in that sense I feel like I'm a pretty reasonable listener or viewer is maybe I'm a little too forgiving but I think about what if that were me? You know, people make mistakes. People aren't perfect. YouTube is edited, but I may not be. You know what I mean? So I feel like sometimes it's best to be your natural organic self because nobody is like you. But people are afraid to do that. They don't want to expose themselves to the criticism. And as much as I wouldn't want to get hurt about anything about me because I don't want to change me, I'm quite happy with me, I would have to be really self-confident to be able to say or be able to ignore or not pay it so much attention to those types of comments. I think that's a good way to end it, that YouTube is an entity that we are not going to explore right now and have to consider a lot of things before we decide to explore it, especially with the kind of backlash there could be around YouTube or the amount of influence people have on YouTube. YouTube is not real life. Yeah. It's just what someone edits to make it look like for other people to see. Yeah. It's just a whole lot of responsibility is all it is to me. Yeah. This is too, but I don't know. I feel like less for you. No, not, not even that. Because I mean, I have to be conscious of what I'm saying. I can't be throwing names and this is like no tomorrow. Because mm -hmm. eventually, what if this becomes popular? What if somebody heard it and I said something that I shouldn't have said? You have to be aware. And I mean, I told you like before how sometimes I feel like you might stray off and say something you shouldn't say. And I kind of redirect the conversation, you know? Because there is a line where you're sharing, oversharing or sharing too much or sharing information that doesn't need to be shared. And for me, it can be easy to overshare, I feel like. But there are some things that you have to keep to yourself. Yeah. And that's with anything, I think. Which is kind of why I have enjoyed not having social media because my life is private. But having a podcast, it's kind of not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is where we're going to go ahead and end today's episode. I did enjoy this topic and hopefully we can revisit this again and see where our views stand. Yeah, it's not entirely all about YouTube. It's more about the internet overall, I suppose. Yeah. But this was fun. I enjoyed it. Was. I enjoyed releasing my thoughts of the YouTube world initially and now, I suppose. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening to another episode of a Playful Escape podcast. Make sure to send us an email if there's anything that you want us to talk about in a future episode. Our email is a playful escape at gmail.com. And to follow us on all of our other social media handles, we are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Our handle for that is at a playful escape. And mostly I am the one managing all of that but cindy has her 
comments here and there. Yeah. So make sure to follow us all on all of the social medias and we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye.